Dudes, how you doing? Welcome back. So we have a big project ahead of us today. It is in the shape of this wonderful ram here. We're gonna be doing uh, the full windshield, all the sides and the rear, and also a panoramic sunroof. So 70 on the full windshield. Did I change that? I did change that. 70 on the full windshield, uh, 20 on all the sides in the rear, and then 70 also on the sunroof. So, big, big, big work. I don't think I had another short 70. No, I don't. Oh, I forgot my card reader. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, well. AJ, Brian, Matt, Sean, Naka, Supreme, What's up? And BCM. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely gonna have to be careful of the BCM like always. Also the stitching on the paneling is one of those, uh, um, what is it? it? It's got the, like this soft touch trim with like the stitching in it that can swell. So we're gonna have to cover that up pretty thoroughly. Tint business, how you doing? Fast M, Adrian, Cash, Lionel, Ken, Lucas, Nutter Butter. <laughs> Love it. Yes, we are doing a full windshield as well. We got a whole lot of work to do. Just had a town car this morning and I couldn't do the job because one window didn't work, but it worked a few minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, so sometimes, like, I, I've definitely ran into my fair share of that. Absolutely. Sometimes you could do little things that would maybe make it work. Uh, so, like, leaving the door shut sometimes would, like, kind of connect the wires enough. So it wasn't specific to the town car, but I can't tell you how many times I would come across, like, an older car where one of the rear windows, usually it was the back passenger one. It happened on stream before just wouldn't work. But that's no fun. I would I would tint the rest of it and be and tell them like, "Hey, I can tint this as is or if you want to get it fixed first, then we'll tint it after." That's sometimes a good way to do it cuz letting the money out walk out the door is uh is no good or extra sad. Good morning. How y'all doing? Everybody's saying this is an early stream. It's not that early. Well, yeah, it is. It is early. Oh, I gotta drag this window over. He was here and saw it during the walkthrough. Aw. I never do that before the walkthrough. I find out way too late. <laughs> Customers dropped off, cars pulled in, shades are picked out, and then I, I go cut out all my patterns or clean the glass, prep the back window, start cutting out patterns, get to that rear window, and then that's when I have a problem. And we're far too late in the job to do anything about it. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so we got this. So we're going to jump into it. Haven't cut in 25 years. Picked up a roll from Ralph and some tools. Had it cut for weird. first window three times before I had a good one. Then nothing but dust. Oh, that sucks. That's the window tinting game. 21 Ranger called right after. Hopefully you can come here. Oh, that'd be good. It's seven for me. Ooh. You guys on the West Coast. I hope this has enough battery. That's not something I've said before, right? Wow. I walk through, pulling a car in, have them roll all the windows up and down even before I pull it in. Damn, you guys are thorough. I was doing jobs for like my dad's place. We were doing them for like 160, 170. I don't think I ever did that. Just because I'm lazy, <laughs> I 
get bit in the ass later. But if you run into it, it, it depends on how many times you run into it. And inevitably, it was like it was always on like a Grand Prix or something. Grand Prix, Grand Am, Buick, the passenger rear door. So frustrating. Can you scroll? There we go. I do have coffee. I don't think it's going to last, though. All right, we'll get started here. Check, check. Good morning. I'm working on a Ford Cougar V6. What year? What year was the Cougar? Those thick stripes with a piece of glass in between? You mean like the defroster lines? <laughs> Might want to try turning them on before you tint the window. Sometimes that can help with warming them up, but Ford Cougar. I don't know when the last time I saw one of those. Oh shit, where's my stuff? 22 years old. Oh, okay. So not, you know, that, oh God, that's just scary. That's 2000. Makes it sound like it's the 80s. 22 years old. It was 2000. Y2K. Oh, God. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's brand new. It's a year 2000. Isn't that scary? Is that considered classic car now? When, do, when is a car considered a classic car? I feel short doing this one. This one seems taller. Okay, so this stitching right here, you guys gotta be careful on stuff like this. So most Rams don't have this, but this one being a limited does. So we're gonna have to tape this up extra good here because what's gonna happen is that stitching's gonna get a little wet and then it's gonna cause the paneling to swell. So I'm gonna make sure this is taped off extra good. Just be careful out there. Most paneling, you're not gonna run into this, but whenever you get this like, this like leathery soft touch panel, that's when you're like with the stitching in it, that's when you can have, you can have some problems. So it already looks like a little wavy in some spots. Not much, just like it it's, would be a really natural thing for it to happen. I don't know why they designed it this way, but you know, it looks cool. Shit. I don't really see that doesn't even do much for me. Fair enough. <laughs> We're just trying to get one over here. Let's make sure that we get locked out of it. Tape that down. Uh, is there an alternative to the Lowe's tape? Why do you guys need alternatives? Just use it. There's uh, tuck tape, um, basically any house wrap tape. 
I, I would imagine is, is going to work very similar to this because that's what this is. No, Matt, I want to use a different thing because I want to be different. There's no Lowe's in Holland. Well, shit. <laughs> no, I figured it was something like that. Um, house wrap tape. So I'm sure they build houses in Holland too. So it's house wrap tape, sheathing tape. Um, it's just got a stronger adhesive. It's made to be water resistant. Um, and it's just done really, really well at sticking to most sur surfaces and still pulling off clean. So yeah, much better than packing tape. Fair point, you win. And yeah, we're sponsored by Lowe's. No, we don't see, we don't need to be sponsored by Lowe's because we already use them. That's how that works. So what we need to do is approach Home Depot and go, hey, I use a lot of Lowe's tape on the stream. What do you, what do you think about using Home Depot? And then Home Depot will happily say, we don't actually have tape. Oh. That'd be kind of amazing. I should just email some of those companies just to see. But that's, that's how you would be more likely to get them. You gotta go for the competitor because Lowe's already has the in. They don't care. Unless they're just like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> and then they're like, damn, this guy uses a lot of our tape. What's the discount code for the tape? <laughs> I wish I had one. It's uh, their loyalty program or something, which I still have yet to sign up for. They, they've asked so many times. They're like, do you want to set up, sign up for our loyalty program? And I'm just like, I, I hate those. Like I hate signing up for stuff like that. But at this point, I probably would have saved a lot of money because then I'd go and spend a couple hundred dollars there for supplies. There we go. That's nice, nice and safe now. Where's my knife? So we're gonna use the plotter on that slider, as far as I know. Ugh, I wish I had a short roll. I think I ran out. I usually have a short roll of Pro Nano, but we have installed so much ceramic lately, I think I ran out. And then I like had just ordered a bunch of rolls. So I've just been using longer rolls for most of my stuff. I don't get that many just front door appointments, but when you have a truck, it becomes insanely helpful to have a 24-inch 20, roll. So unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to waste some film. Daniel Rayner super chatted $9.99. Good morning, Royal Prince Sahib of Tinting. Daniel Rayner. Daniel Rayner, how you doing, sir? With the 10, good morning, Royal Prince Sheba of Tinting. Well, thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you so much for the 10. I appreciate it a lot. Always good to have you here. Why don't you use a plotter for every car you do, even though you're nasty at hand cutting? Isn't it quicker to use a isn't it quicker to use a plotter? I'm nasty at hand cutting. Is that like is that like busted? Or is it actually a good thing? Or are you just making fun of me? Um, so this is something that I always have to I always have to mention. Um, plotters are nasty as in great. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, yeah, plotters uh, are are good overall, um, and I use them for I'll use them for back windows and quarter windows a lot of the time. But it's never about speed. Um, for me, especially on these streams. So I've never been as happy with the edges on a plotter cut. You can always get a better edge, either filing or hand cutting. So when somebody's paying a lot of money to get their car tinted here, I mean, that's one thing that they're paying for, is like that, that's one reason the pricing is, is set the way that it is. It allows me to spend extra time and make things a little extra nice. So that's why. How much feet of tape do you think you use per car? <laughs> Um, I don't know, just a couple feet this way, probably about three feet that way, and then like another foot. Do that per door. I think there's, on a roll, is there like 150, no, like a 55 yards? I think they're either 150 to like 250 feet long for at least the rolls. I don't know. I don't know, it's all, uh, it's all priced in. I'm not sure. How well does your AC hold up in your shop? You have AC in your shop? <laughs> 165 feet, oh, a little less than I thought. So it's 165 feet divided by like what? They're like 10 bucks a roll. Do I have, a, this is probably like the 50th time that I've looked here hoping that I'll one day see a Pro Nano 20%. But no, I have so much Pro Classic and Pro Nano 50, but I, I must have used it or misplaced it. So long roll it is. Should be this one. We have to double and triple check rolls today just because Pro Nano 20. <laughs> just because we had a bad time the other day accidentally using the wrong shade on the front doors. Let's tighten you up. I see the Expel box. Yes, Clearview, thank you so much. I've mentioned it a couple times. I don't know if you've been here. I've been waiting for you to, to show up. Yeah, um, got the, uh, got the Expel box in. So that should be awesome. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm excited to do some testing. Clearview sent out an Expel box with uh, XR Plus, CS, XR, um, actually two different XR Plus shades. So we'll be doing some comparisons. I actually shot um, a shrinking comparison yesterday. I had a charger which always makes a good back window video. Um, but this one uh, is gonna be shrunk once with, uh, God, what's it called? With Lexan and the other one with Pro Classic.
Ooh, I think we just got it. It is close. <laughs> you can use a 20 inch roll on these, super handy. But if you split them in half, you have just enough film. So this is a 40. After using, after using Expel and Geo, I can't even look at Lexan. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty dramatic difference. So one thing was at the class. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Well, it's one of those days, boys. Must have had something on my squeegee. Already put a line in it. Well, it didn't matter. It didn't even matter. I just didn't want to have, uh, so I can shrink these, I can put them on sideways, and I can do them sideways. I just don't like doing them sideways as much. This door does not like me. So we'll set this up for the other side. I don't know, maybe I grab something off the door, maybe it's something on my squeegee, whatever the case. There is an unfortunate line there. I don't know why I saved it. I don't really have a good answer for that. I should just toss it. Cause I'm never gonna use it. There's always something about like, oh, maybe I can use it for something. No, it's garbage. It's hot garbage. Squeeze those together. We'll just catch up on this. I'm still gonna double cut them together. I could bring it over to the other side, but eh. Let's just match these two back up, I think. There's that. Drag this over. Cut this side. Drag it back, drag it down. Good. So I should probably get a better plastic knife, but I like the plastic knife. Believe it or not.
Ultra sharp blade. Get this butt up against the glass. Yay. Nice. Very nice. Um, <laughs> I could have used it for an Ultima. <laughs> yeah, no. So you see how offset one is from another right now? <laughs> I noticed it was when I was cutting the bottom edge. I dragged it down a little farther, so they'll both be good. One's just a little, little higher than the other one right now. Let me just line this one up with the other one. Take care of it on the board. There we go. 5%. No, this is 20. Well, together it's 5. But it's going to be 20. How did the Lexan comparison go yesterday? It went... Um, it went fine. I'm having... I'm going to have a little hard time really getting my point across because it's not their fault. So between, I've, I've got some footage from one of the classes. Um, so a student brought in, um, he, he spent $1,500, got a bunch of Lexan, was practicing with that and had a hell of a time on back windows. So then when he came in for the class, you know, he was like, oh, hey, can I bring in, like, can I use the film and, and just try it out and see how it goes? It's like, yeah, absolutely. So we were jumping back and forth between Geo and Lexan. And what I can tell you is Lexan has like, if, you, if you've been tinning for, for a little while, using Lexin, you're gonna be able to do it. If you're brand new, which is what, this is what is really frustrating me, I had to kind of think about it for a while. Lexin kind of makes you adopt like two different shrinking styles, so the beginning goes nice and smooth. And then the second half of that window, you gotta put a lot more focused heat. It still shrinks relatively smoothly, but you have to put so much heat closer to the glass and keep things moving. And so what happens is people keep messing up the corners and it ruins the entire window. They either mess up the corners or one spot and it destroys like the whole rest of the shrink. So when I pick it up, it honestly looks like most of it just takes longer. But I have a clip in there too of one of the students that just has a clear cut illustration between something like Pro Classic and Lexan. It's still kind of a hard thing for me to illustrate because it's like, if you don't really know, it's tough. If you don't really know what you're looking at, it doesn't look <laughs> like there's much of a headache going on. There's some parts that I can point it out a little bit more clearly. But the total shrink time difference was one of them took, I don't know, like on, on a charger, it took like five or six minutes. And with, I think the Lexan was like eight or nine minutes, something like that. So it was like, 
basically like a there's a three minute difference between the two, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'll save money over three minutes. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> But hopefully I can uh, I can illustrate my point pretty clearly. We'll see. Good. Can we get these to match up, please? Close enough. Do you have a file slash save windows? No. No, just something I have not really perfected. I have a lot of respect for it. Hear me. Hello. No, we're still good. So, like, if you want to use it and you want to save some money, like, then definitely go for it. Don't don't let me stop you. Um, I just want to make it very clear ahead of time to what people are getting in, into. Because what's going to happen is, like, this is exactly what happened with one of my students. He spent $1,500, got a bunch of film, and then he keeps getting to this point where he keeps screwing up the window, watches the videos, and, and it just doesn't, doesn't quite add up. So when we use the two different films in person, I could point out exactly when he had to shrink it differently. So you start out shrinking one way, and then all of a sudden you have to start putting a lot more heat, move a lot slower, and be a lot more focused. Oh god, we did that thing. I made a joke on it, and then I shut it. <laughs> uh, it was strong enough. Hey, look at that. We used the 40. Yeah, you can use a uh, a 20 inch for the front and the back on these. Glad it's not just me. Lexing keeps giving me hell. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely not. And it's you don't really know unless you have some some experience uh, with some other films. Which when you buy that film, chances are that that's the first film that you're buying. And shrinking is already a hard enough thing to understand. So you're new, you want to save some money, I get it. It makes all the sense in the world. So all the all the people championing it, like I don't want to say they're wrong and I don't want to say the company is wrong for selling it because there's obviously a market for it and your business is your business. But when you're trying to learn. It's just tough. You get what you pay for. The other piece to that is you can actually save money and still learn uh, with a different film and have a much easier time using it. I might have to I might have to pick up some T view off of Amazon. Cause you can use you can absolutely use T 
Tint Depot, you're going to have a much easier time using it. It's a little bit more expensive. I guess I have to have a, a goal of finding some of the cheapest practice film that you possibly can. I think theirs is a, uh, a super good option. The only ones that I haven't, that I've been asked about more frequently too was, was T-View. But, oh come on, give me that image, there we go. I have 35 on my windshield and the haze isn't bad at all. That part, that's subjective. I mean, I think it is bad. <laughs> I had people say my Walmart video, that film was like, oh yeah, that's totally fine. And I'm like, what? So I, I should just leave a caveat. I don't feel I don't feel safe leaving that on my customers' cars. sand a red dot will it scratch <clears throat> I don't understand what you mean I've never seen anybody sand a red dot there and I can shrink on the bottom remind me to get 20 inch rolls <sighs> Anyone know a good tint that is good for beginners, but not crappy, tint that will fade quick and has a great UV protection? Um, you're gonna be able to find just bulk rolls, probably a hundred and, probably in the like 150 to $200 range is honestly, like Tint Depot's five year I think is like 160. Check out their uh, their five year. That, that's kind of like the cheapest I would go. That, that's the thing though. You're not going to be able to find like cheap, cheap tint that lasts without sacrificing something else. So you can buy a full like color stable roll. For a couple hundred dollars. I mean, it, it's not like a good quality roll of film is all that expensive. So, like, I guess it just depends on how cheap. <clears throat> Solar free? I don't know enough about them. I haven't seen them. Sounds like sugar free. What about Geo? <laughs> I don't know. 
There's always this interesting range that I see people in, like... What, uh, like, I think at 36 of Pro Classic is, like, 225, something like that. Helios Orbit is going to be very, very similar, and that's less expensive. There's too many people, they look at the whole cost of the roll. You need to split it up per car. 190 for Orbit 40? Yeah, get that. <laughs> What's the green squeegee you use for cleaning the outside of windows? Oh, this guy? This is a Libman, um, like a flat glass squeegee. It works really well for cars. It's not quite a tinter squeegee, but it works insanely well. Is there a way I can stop my roll from telescoping? You gotta grip it harder. Grip it harder, support it from the bottom, tighten the roll up a little bit. That's a good one too. You can get Orbit 60 inch rolls for 290. Get them cut the way that you want. Save money that way. That's a hell of an option there. For sure. Not enough companies do that anymore. So that used to be a big, bigger trend. Companies used to discount 60 inch rolls because they sell lots of longer rolls and their short rolls start to stack up. So it was incentive for the buyer. Um, to take some of their inventory off their hands. So you order in 60 inch rolls instead of like, you know, 3620 or just 36 or just forties. A lot of short rolls would stack up on the shelf. So I guess I didn't realize that they were still doing that. Not many companies do. How do you go about tinning slag spattered glass? So if it's been hit with a, like a welder, like you described, you can try and scrape it off, but that's all, that's as much as you can do. You can try and scrape it off the razor blade, but you're always gonna have pits and stuff. You just gotta replace the glass. Damaged glass is, like, there's very few ways to fix damaged glass. There really isn't anything good. Unfortunately, you just gotta replace it. Oh, come on. There we go. 
The slag is gone, but the glass is pitted. Yeah, it's, there's no way to fill it. You just gotta replace it. Unfortunately, get this freakishly close. Right about, oh yeah, that's nice. Carpet shield. Oh yeah, so as for the Orbit film we were talking about, Sun Distributing. You can find that at Sun Distributing. Tint Depot is also another really good resource for film, so check them out. As for Geo, you can buy it direct from them. I also have a website, Tint Stuff. MyTintStuff.com. I sell a lot of personalized tools like this Detroit Tint Studio Squeegee. Well, actually, this is the Detroit Tint Studio Triage. Where's my other? Where's my green boy? I always misplace my green boy. This guy, this guy. They're pretty awesome. So if you like what you see here, if you wanna help support it. Oh, and I can't forget this guy. See, like we just do special studio edition stuff. It's been fun. But that's where you can find it. Help support doing these streams so you guys can suffer along with me. See, look at this. Look at this shank. Look at how it helps. This is such a dumb tool. <laughs> I know I've told this story, but if you've never heard it before, so like, Sun Distributing and I, we, we go way back. Uh, so Rick, the owner, he's like, a, he's been a long time tinner. It's like 30 years, 30 plus years tinting. And And there's always some new tool that comes out. But there's a whole lot of like chintzy, gimmicky things. Um, and tinning doesn't really change a whole lot. So whenever something new comes out, like there's always a little bit of skepticism with it unless it just naturally is like, oh, that's really, really smart. So this thing, I was like, that is super dumb. So this came out like when I was doing one of the uh, 44 Tools tint competitions. And I was like, that is like the weirdest, dumbest little tool I think I've ever seen. It's just a crooked butter knife. And then like five years later, Rick hands one to me and he's like, you have to try this. And I was like, that's super dumb. And then I tried it and it's been a tool that I've used on like every window since, every door window. <laughs> it's so handy. It's so handy that we have a custom green one now. Looking good, no scratch through it. That's always nice to see, you know. <laughs> All right, let's peel this off.
What's the soap mixture you use? Just got a five gallon keg. Congrats, that's awesome. So I use, uh, with Geo, I use about a quarter Dawn. Oh, look at that, look at that, nice and dry. Yes. I use about a quarter Dawn. Um, and three quarters baby shampoo. So in a three gallon keg, I, I use about two and a half ounces of baby shampoo and about an almost like a full ounce of Dawn. So I have about three and a half ounces on average. So with a five gallon, I might put like an extra ounce of baby shampoo at the most. Probably wouldn't do a lot more than that. But again, that's with these films. These films are uh, a little tacky. Wish I could touch, tuck like that, I have the shank. So, that's a good thing to bring up. So with tucking, a lot of it is the setup. It's keeping the bottom edge not too long either. Stuff like that will definitely make it more challenging to tuck your film. So in about a minute, we'll go over the tucking part again. Two staging is always a harder way to tint or a harder way to learn it. Is that insulation plastic wrap? No, that is a uh, carpet shield. It's not going to it's not going to be as cost effective as trash bags, honestly. If you split trash bags in half um, and tape them to the top, you can definitely save a little money that way. Or you could just reuse some like, like a shower curtain or something and try and tape that to the top. I just hate trying to tape things to the top edge. I like just putting a line of tape there and then sticking something to it. I learned two staging from your videos, then bottom losing was easy after. Well, that's cool. It's good to know both. It really is. There's always situations where you're gonna wanna do one or the other. Like, I do this for most vehicles. Every once in a long while, I'm gonna come across something that I need to approach differently. Okay. So we're gonna slide our film nicely into one side. Notice how I have it hanging off. See that liner, how it's keeping the film away from the pillar too? Fold up the tent from the corner, slide it over. If it does that, see how that air pocket just popped up on me? Back the film off a little bit and then go back in. Just keep it juttered, keep it wiggling. That'll help it get to where you need it to go. And then on this other side, fold up the same corner, leave it flat and then tuck it back over. 
So this is important. This is important for the way that we're going to get this uh, bottom set up. Everything's nice and flat against the sides. It was the most crease resistant film. They're all going to be not crease resistant. Film has to be rigid, mostly, because it's got to last on the glass. If it was really soft, you get scratches from it rolling up and down all day. It's got to have a nice hard coat. It's got to be durable. You're looking, you're looking for shortcuts to make window tinting easier. There unfortunately aren't many. That's one reason why tinting costs what it does. Oh, don't want that to drop too far. Oh, look how, look how nice. That was with a plastic knife too, look at that. <laughs> I like those blades. Okay, I'm gonna let that tack there for a second. I'm gonna go grab a sip of coffee. I'm always afraid of creasing. It's just a part of it. What do you think about the black magic from Walmart? Uh, you know, just something cheap and you don't really care how long it's gonna last. Use, uh, use their dyed film, don't go for the ceramic. The ceramic is not clear. Okay, so now it's gripped. We can roll it up. So for tucking, first thing I'll do is I'll pick up the liner here flush down anything that, like, because you rolled the window up, that brings dirt, so I wet everything, I flush all the dirt back down, then I go and I peel my liner, because I don't want to peel the liner and have it stick to something that was cruddy that just rolled up, so then the tint part was dry, or the glue part, so then we go and spray that, and you can see how we tuck this in flat, you kind of want your film to be rolled in a little bit, not flipped up. So everything, all I have to do then is pick up the film from like a couple inches away from the glass and then you can press the corner in and then see how this is nice and flat against the glass. Like the film is touching the glass. Nice straight line here. I'll take my shank, pry back that seal just a little bit Tuck it in just a little bit. You don't have to go very far because you can't tuck the film in all the way because there's still a bunch of film that is bumped on the paneling. So same thing for this other side. That's how quick this can be. See how it's rolled up? You can just grab it. See that corner? Pull back the seal, get that started. And now you have basically two lines coming this way and a bunch of film here. I can't tuck this without lifting this part. So in order to do that, I, I basically wanna try and continue this into some type of like a, like a roll. So we're picking it right up off of the paneling now. See how that's sitting right above the seal there? I can now take my shank, I can go from one side, the other side doesn't matter. Now I can try and tuck this in See, look at that. See how now that is all falling into the seal? You can go back to the other side and get it started even more if you want or work from one side to the other. So get more of that tucked in. It's above my seal and I'm just pulling that seal back and getting that film to tuck down into it. And then from there, everything will just kind of fall into place. So that also is because, like, it, it falls in that smoothly because I'm not going too far down into my seal either. So if you have a lot of extra film that you're trying to tuck, you're going to have a lot harder time trying to do that. But see, that's what's so magical about something like the shank. 
where before I could still tuck window tint without it and I was doing it pretty regularly with like an easy reach. So this is the tri edge. This scratches film way less. But look at the difference here. So let's get this shank tucked in here. And this shank has this nice little handy bevel here where it stays out of your way for the most part. There's some other like handle tools that'll help pull the seal back. Same type of thing. You just want a tool that'll help pull the seal back. Whichever one you want to use is, is entirely up to you. I like this because it's, it's small. It stays in my belt. If you want something that's a little bit wider or whatnot, I think they can, they can get in your way in another way. But somebody handed, like, uh, like I said, Rick handed me a shank. I've been using this ever since. With, um, with like a corner tool, you can use that, do the exact same thing, right? And pry the seal back. But look at that. Look at this kind of pinches against the glass where the shank gives you a little bit more clearance there. So this will cause the film to pinch a little bit more. But it's amazing for squeegeeing out the film. That little difference. And that's been the, that's really the trend with like a lot of tinting tools, tools in general. Good tools don't make you an amazing tinter or an installer, but they all add up to making things a lot easier. I use two speed lo loaders with weights on them. That's cool, that's awesome. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of interesting seal tools to help pull the seal back without, uh, without taking the seal out. So the, the issue becomes the tightness of that seal. So I've been able to use the shank with something as tight as an Audi or a Jetta. Have any of your customers said anything about the top edge getting scratched from the top seals on the new Rams? I have a 2020 Ram Pro Nano. I have a 21 and put Pro Nano on the top edge and it scratched the fronts. So I haven't heard, that's the first one I've heard specifically of Rams doing that. Um, it, it seals just like the rest of your vehicle. You should clean them here and there um, it's not something I really mentioned because every vehicle is going to be a little bit different. But you have uh, glass and like a rubber seal up here. So here, we'll just move this one out of the way for a minute for illustration. So let's roll this down. So these are actually relatively loose here. The, like they're not super tight. Um, but they are like a, a, you know, it's a, it's a rubber material here. So if dirt and stuff, like it'll, it'll start to collect on this window. And then with repeated pressure and force, it'll keep pressing against that. So if you, if your windows, especially down like a dirt road or something, there's going to be all types of crud that gets built up. So I've seen some do way worse. Um, where dirt will collect in your bottom seal, and then it'll, it'll keep wearing sand and grit against your entire window and, and can scratch your window. I cleaned all my windows prior. Oh, I dropped it on the floor. I know I saw it. I know I saw it. I forgot to pick it up. There it is. Ah! I'll clean them before install since I clean all my gaskets prior to it. 
I mean, it's it's honestly hard to say. Like that, there could be any number of little things there that would cause the tint to scratch a little bit. Um, so it's not like I don't know. It doesn't really surprise me. Um, but I I've tinted lots of Rams and haven't really had that mentioned. There's times I'll roll the glass down and I'll see lots of little scratches in the top of the glass, but nobody really mentions it. Nobody really talks about it. So, I don't know, hard to say. I don't think, going off of Rams versus every other vehicle, Rams aren't much different. So, I don't think it'd be Rams specifically. Just that vehicle, something happened. This guy off. See, lots of crud. Lots of crud sits up there. Scrub it. That. Squeegee, squeegee, squeegee. Flush the sides. A few times. Just cause, I don't know. I don't have a good reason other than I'm thorough. I guess that's a pretty good reason, huh? Peel this down. <laughs> so going back to the cone sprayer has been interesting. I've definitely noticed areas where I spray significantly more water. But I, I missed using it a little bit. I think I'm going to stick with them. I think there's times the fan tips are, are great, and there's times that the cone tips are great. I don't really think it matters too much one way or another, but I might prefer the cone tips just a little bit. I like the adjustability. <laughs> and I just converted from the fan, from the fan to the gun. Oh, okay, no, I sorry, I had that backwards in my head. Like, just when I switch. It's always funny when I start using something a little bit different, and somebody's like, I just got that. I just got the other thing. Why'd you switch? What the hell, man? Roll that up. Spray that out. See? Then we're going to pull our liner. Flush out 
our window so it's gonna be nice and clean, get the tint wet. And you can see how these are already kind of rolled in. That corner there, keep this nice and flat. Take that shank, start tucking that side corner in there. Go back to this one, start tucking that corner in there. Pull this seal, or roll your tent up a little bit. Uh oh, come on, come on. I think we're not in our seal. That little tape, there we go, that's better keeping it raised a little bit. There we go, get it all tucked in. I've always used the comb, but decided to order the fan and I liked it a bit more. Makes sense. That's why they make both. More, more than one way. More than one way to tin a window. This could go so much faster if you just pulled the belt molding. Super easy to pull. Oh, people don't understand. <laughs> you could do this faster. Just take his truck apart. Why is he not tinting faster? He should be tinting faster. I don't have to tint faster. but I really don't think it would save much time either. I've pulled plenty of seals. I, I think the trade-off in pulling the seal apart like the, the time that you pull the seals is, is still time. So it might make the actual tinting part a little faster and then you've got to roll the windows and put down the seal. Like, it's, dude, on a lot of cars, it's so comparable. It's just I'm not really trying to move fast, period. I'm just trying to do a really high-quality job here. I could probably, I could, well, no, not probably. I could save a bunch of time if I wouldn't want to tape and protect the paneling and, you know, make sure the windows were super clean. And like, there's a bunch of things I could do to save some more time. But this job is not about saving time. You know, he drove three and a half hours to be here and he's getting full ceramic on everything with the sunroof. I would. <laughs> that's that's one hundred percent true. If I pulled the seal, a lot of times I default into just two staging it anyways. <laughs> it's just now my seal is out of my way. I don't know. I don't get it. The you can do like No, we are doing a windshield. I just haven't prepped it. I should have had it prepped already, but I haven't. So we're doing everything with the windshield and this big boy, panoramic roof. 
We're doing everything. Once I do this door, I'll prep it, because I'll do the back window. The windshield should be all set, ready to go. So I gotta try and stay on top of things today. Bottom load for life, except that A6. Why didn't you take apart the A6, man? <laughs> See, that's what, that's what really kills me. Oh, God. Whoa! Window tinting life super shattered forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Oh, I know you. I left you a Window message tinting yesterday, life. but I'm sure you get many every day. Could I schedule at your cost a one on one call to go over streaming gear before I make the purchase? <laughs> That's David. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about it. David, thank you so much for the fifty. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, yesterday was, was the wife's birthday. That's a big one. Thank you so much for the 50. Yes, we can go over, over live streaming gear. That's cool that you want to get into it. A lot of people have gotten into it lately. I scheduled a charger yesterday and I was really like upset because I didn't mean to schedule it on her birthday. I like half forgot. He asked for a Friday, like fr like the next Friday from when I booked it. And I was like, yeah, sure. And then I had it and then it's like the sixth and I'm like, oh, shit. But she had a good one. We're also going to Florida at the end of the month, so that's kind of a thing. Oh. What was else I was gonna see? I was, is that the A6? Oh, I was gonna mention, so, <laughs> yeah, Extreme Shades did a, uh, I, caught, I caught some of that. Two stage day uh, A6 yesterday. I was I was trying to ask why why didn't he pull the seals on that one? It, it always seems to go like this. The, a lot of the cars that are easy to tint are also easy to pull the seals, so it doesn't matter to me. But the ones that are hard to tint can also be, like an Audi, can also be annoying to pull the seals on. <laughs> so. I don't know. So I don't know if you guys can tell here. There's a little bit of a dip here in the way that this glass kind of looks like it's rounded at the top. Hand cutting is very, like your vehicle specific, where when you get to plotters, it's taking like this whole model range from like whenever they started to whenever they are now. So a lot of times, the top edges is really where 
where the patterns can suffer. So then you'd have to recut them anyways. If you want to get like really, really close or you got to shave them off. So I just don't like doing that. I'd rather just hand cut and know exactly what I'm getting. Especially because I'm not going for high production. over see one corner other corner pull the top up shuffle your tint in and just make sure it's all below that seal as you're pushing it so I will lead with the shank if I can do a really bad job pulling it back so I'll lead with the shank and kind of shuffle it back in here and make sure that tint starts to get tucked into just below that seal as I'm kind of pushing that air pocket down So you get all that stuff tucked in. Good, good. Pass that aside. Doors look like they're all done. How about that? <laughs> Just buy it all, Dave. Uh, I see more live streaming in your set. Uh, see more live streaming and your setup somehow stands out the most but everyone else is doing great so I hope to add my touch with live streaming you guys rock thanks Matt yeah you're welcome we can definitely talk about it uh, just buy it all 400 Hollyland 400 oh yeah that's a big long list of uh, of stuff <laughs> so what I've noticed too is shop lighting makes a big difference in overall quality. This goes with just any camera recording. You can have bad lighting with a nice camera, or you can have good lighting with the bad camera, and the bad camera is gonna look better based on how the lighting is. So one thing I really um, focused on in the beginning was like what makes good lighting, and to be honest, having white walls only on one side kind of sucks in comparison to like this side. So things are a little bit brighter over in there than they are over here. But what I wanted to do was try and direct, like if I look like this, I wanted to direct as much lighting to go from top down as I possibly could. So this big diffuser thing was probably the most cost effective way for me to have a bright ceiling because my ceilings are dark and I don't know how much it would be to paint all of that, but I'm assuming it would be really expensive. I get a lot of square footage. So that was a, that was a big part of like the overall setup to help things look better but as far as just like getting the equipment and seeing how it looks, um, it's start there and then start playing around with your lighting. But yeah, all the stuff that I had in the video is still stuff that I'm using. The crazy wireless HDMI transmitter. The Max Lens mod. All the batteries, it's basically all the same. That was like one of my worst performing videos too. It was really sad. <laughs> 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 
Nobody on my channel wants to hear me talk about this stuff. We gotta talk about tinting. You have one light that likes to change colors. Oh, that little guy? <laughs> so they're all supposed to change. I just got that one later, I think. I think you're talking about that one. I got that one later, and I just haven't hooked it up like the rest of them. <laughs> that was like um, accent lighting, like, it, like I was doing in the studio or in the home garage when I was doing stuff from there. I wanted to take that here. So I ordered those cans, and they look like they would be bigger. I was like, wow, these are pretty inexpensive. And then I got them like, oh, they're really small. Eh, we'll still use them. I put some RGB bulbs in them. It's like similar thing that I did with like the lights, the RGB lighting on the sides. Having bright lights on the side actually, like, I wanted to backlight my uh, glass boards, and it actually really throws off your camera a lot. Whenever your camera is looking at a bright light source, it dims down. So if you have like a, a car here and a light there, the light is gonna make the car look much darker in comparison, so you get rid of it and then your scene will brighten up a little bit more have good top-down lighting. Because with a car, where's my tape? Where did I put that? I gotta put one, I gotta put one there. Let me go grab another. Let me grab this, this bag of, you see these rolls? You see these rolls right here? These don't make the cut. Yeah, it looks good on this side. Maybe we could have shipped it. So these are the rolls. These are the rolls that I get forced to use. Where's the end? They don't make the cut. They look too ugly to ship. So I use all the ugly rolls. I'm forever in perpetual ugly roll land. Now he's talking about I was talking about Haas stream. How so? Oh, I should cut that off. That feels sticky on the top. Oh, because your backlights? Oh no, I tried that. I tried to just do it myself, and I just noticed, like, I was, I was just talking about playing around with lighting. These are all things that I just learned with a lot of trial and error. Haas has the lights behind this, the glass boards. It's a really helpful thing to have as a tinner. It's a really bad thing to have as a live streamer. Sorry, man. <laughs> well, there, he got a crash course in lighting. <laughs> Try turning them off and then see how your lighting changes. If you notice that it's it's not helping. Lighting's so situational too. But if you ever felt like it feels dark. So if you go way back in my videos, I tinted in a bay. So I got a knife in my mouth. I tinted in a bay. Uh, 
uh, with bright lights on the sides, and you can see just how dark the image looked a lot of the time. Maybe if I add more lightings to counteract the lights on the walls. Uh, <sighs> I'd try turning them off first. Uh, where's my... Where's my baggie? It's, I, I have a feeling it's over here, but it might not be. Dang it. I just used it yesterday. Where did I put it? See, oh, there it is. Got it. <sighs> Where exactly do you put your white tape? So I put it, the inside edge of the white tape, I put on the edge of the border. So when I cut, I cut about here. So that gives me a little eighth inch border around the entire thing. You only need to be just inside the dot. So if you wanna cut it tighter than that, by all means do it. It depends on how much space you have on the inside of the glass to work with. So usually on a windshield, the tighter you go, the better. So on average for a back window, I'll cut in the center. Sometimes for a windshield, I'll move it inside a little bit more. I hope I do this right. I did it right yesterday. So I for sure was using this wrong. <laughs> but what throws me off a little bit, I think I need to put a little bit more in here. What I think threw me off a little bit more was A dryer sheet you soak down and you slop all over the windshield. So the wetter the dryer sheet for me, the better. For dry shrink prep, it's like half dry and you have to press harder. So it almost felt like I was just trying to scrape this over a windshield, like a dry windshield and I wasn't doing it right. I'm still not entirely sure. But I see the slurry more, or the coating, or whatever you want to call it. I think this is how it's supposed to look. Why did Sun Distributing stop selling the metal connector for the keg? I don't know. I didn't know they did. <sighs> it might be a supply thing. I know the metal ball lock connector on, only hooks up to one side of my keg, and the, the pins look identical. So I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> but I can do the plastic one on both sides, so. They're on back order? Yeah, that makes more sense. They've had a really challenging time trying to keep inventory Wait, we didn't even do the back window. What are we doing? We're doing the windshield right now? At least we're doing it in the right shape. Yesterday, I totally got distracted. I've done so many ceramic windshields. Yesterday's appointment was pro classic. 
I accidentally gave him a 50% ceramic windshield. <laughs> he was very happy. <laughs> I was I was trying to I started with doing the windshield yesterday just to get a jump on it and I got so distracted with the prep of the windshield that I just put on ceramic instead and then I wrapped up with the windshield I'm like wait I have ceramic on here oh well free gift Doors look good. So I guess we're just going to continue on with this windshield. And then we'll do the sunroof and then the back glass. I don't know. Get this lined up. Pull it. We got a mask off the BCM too. Don't want any crazy truck issues. I'm guessing this is supposed to be connected. What's the shade on the windshield? It pretty much looks clear. It's 70, so it pretty much is clear. Yeah, he said if he had his choice, he would just do limo on most of the truck, dark windshield. But where he lives, it's pretty common for people to get popped for tent, so uh, he's going lighter. But he's a little sad about it. Which I can understand. I'd be sad about it too. Love dry shrink prep. Yeah, it's been working. It's been going well. <laughs> so this is ceramic right now. And the original, like, why I said I wasn't using it 
was because it would stick. And then I saw an application video and I was like, oh, I think I've been putting way too much on. <laughs> But sometimes it was perfectly fine, and sometimes it was way not okay. But one thing I'm actually really trying to avoid with it right now is Dryer sheets always has a little bit, it has something like a, in the residue, like lint or little bits that it, it leaves behind. It's never been like a major issue, but that's because with back windows, I don't reverse roll them, but with windshields, I do. So I wonder if some of the issues that I've had with windshields randomly are little bits from the dryer sheet. Some of it doesn't really make much sense to me. Could be though. Well, apparently this is the proper amount to put on a windshield because this is going perfectly. I know the felt card will leave stuff behind. I thought possibly that too. But what I'll do is I completely clean off the glass. Then I, I'd use a dryer sheet, let that dry, and then I put my tint on top. And then before I go to install it, I spray the entire film, squeegee it all off, so like there's nothing left on the surface. So what I'm thinking is that when you reverse roll, you peel up the liner, you let it down, but when you roll it up, it's all wet. And it's possible stuff on the edges and stuff from the dryer sheet is funneling its way back into the film. That makes sense. So like, for the most part, if everything goes really, really smooth, everything's fine. But once in a while, I'll have like, couple random things. So I'm just doing everything that I can to try and make it as consistent as I possibly can. I don't know. Is there any reason you don't use a hard card? Um, hard card, I'll rip through the film, or at least I would have in the past. So the way that I used to prep my, my back windows and windshields was I used to just wipe them, spray the whole thing down, wipe it off with the towel, dryer sheet it, put the film on top. Um, that wouldn't leave a perfectly clean surface. So if there was like a little speck of sand or something, um, little, little things the hard card would skip over, but if it was a little bit bigger, you'd rip right through the film. So there was a lot of times I'd go to shrink a back window, I'd get halfway through it, and then I'd rip a chunk right out of the back window and have to start over. So with a felt card, it still acts very similarly to a hard card, 
Um, but if there was anything that ever left behind uh, during like the prep process, it would skip right over it. So all the card does is smooth out the film, so you don't have to go as hard as a hard card does. But sometimes it's nice to have a little bit more pressure there. Rick had a really good tool for shrinking. He would use like a slim foot. I think that's what it's called. So it, it kind of looked like this thing right here. Um, it was just a triangle. Uh, and then he put like a felt strip here. And so it was, it was a good way to have both, but you have a little bit more reach. Really, really handy. You'd have to ask him about the specifics though, because they don't think they come with felt strips, so you'd have to just get some felt strips and then get, I think it's called a slim foot. But it was a good mix between the two, really was, because you had like the softness of a felt strip, but you also had like the rigid card behind it. It was good. What up? How you doing? I think Rick sells the roll of felt for those cards. I think so. Plus they have like the, it's just gotta be the right size. So I was gonna say like uh, in the wrapping industry, they have like those little suede strips and stuff like that. Something similar to that would probably work too. So you finally got some Expel. <laughs> yeah, big shout out to, uh, to Clearview. Thank you. He sent some so we can do some comparisons. Should be fun. Beautiful shop, thank you. When filing the edge looks jagged, or does it look perfect? What? When filing. So, oh, with filing a top edge, I mean, I would want it to look clean. I don't have a lot of practice with it though. But yeah, I wouldn't want it to look jagged. Should look flush. If the edge is jagged, your angle of the file is off. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you gotta keep it pretty slim against the glass. this towel. Are the YouTube comments being read to you? Yes. Yeah, that's the only way I can keep up with all you crazy people. Stopping to read too much would just slow everything down. So it's kind of a, a lot, but eventually you get used to it. It feels weird without it after a long time. I 
I don't know names of people though. That that was too much. Everybody's got too many weird user like there's too many weird usernames that take too long. <laughs> So it just reads whatever the questions are. So we're going to tuck that in there. like something here but the rest of it seems to tuck in pretty pretty okay it is a cool setup thank you Yeah, just trying to make everything seamless. Whenever the tech gets in the way, that's when things go downhill. So the priority has been do whatever we can to make the stream very good looking, very smooth, been seamless, but getting there has been one hell of a process. Seems like it's doing pretty good, though. All right. Everything's pretty good except for these corners. I'm just going to leave these a little loose there. <laughs> I'm like, I haven't removed one of these ones yet. I'm definitely tempted to. I know there's a there's a camera system here. I'm assuming the mirror is probably still a twist off mirror. There's just a lot of scary uh, scary plastic housing in the way that I don't really wanna don't really want to risk. But it would really help to get it out of the way for this installation. But I guess we'll just work around it. It's just kind of bulky. <laughs> Here's a question nobody's asked yet. What flooring do you use? Never. Nobody's ever asked that. Uh, it's Race Deck. Race Deck uh, .com is where you can find this floor. It's been nice. I really like it. It lets me snap blades and just let them fall on the floor all day. This is like a shop habit that I've had forever. So this drives some people crazy. They're like, man, you put your blades all over the floor. A lot of places that I've worked for, they just sweep up at the end of the day. They would throw all their crap, all their razor blades on the floor too, especially glass shops. Like they just tear big rubber chunks off of the windshield, throw them on the ground. They had broken glass on the floors. Like this was really normal. So then they sweep up at the end of the day. But what I like about this floor is it falls in between. <laughs> No sweeping until after I decide to finally clean this floor out after like a year or so. Okay. Let's clean off this windshield. So I don't know if this has ever happened to you guys, but have you ever done a windshield and then did a bad job at removing the grease from the lettering and then tint the whole windshield and then you can still see the lettering left behind? It's happened to me. yourself a roofing style oh yeah I've, yeah I've heard that I don't know if I think it'd pick up some but not all of them but when I go to clean the floors yeah 
I had about a million little blades that I <laughs> swept up. At my uh, at my dad's shop, we'd use like razor blades on every car, and then we'd just throw them on the ground. So we were just walking in soapy water and razor blades all day. That's safe. And then in the winter time, there were no floor drains, so like the electrical cords, they would they would start getting really salty. They give you a little shock every once in a while. That was fun. Your dad installs? No, he's just a business owner. <laughs> so he originally saw lazy, uh, like there was a an Auto One. There were a decent sized chain of auto accessory companies back in the day. And he saw just, it was really poorly managed. So eventually he kind of just took it over. He started in the back, took it over, and then eventually went independent and then opened up his own chain. And then the housing market crashed and lost all the stores because also a lot of the auto accessories stuff was really, really changing with, you know, big rise in internet competition, stuff going, OEM. So then he kind of consolidated down into a tint shop slash accessories still, but tint far outweighed anything else. So they still exist as Auto Tint City out in Dearborn. And a couple of my brothers tint there. Oh my god, we forgot. We gotta put a couple towels before we get too carried away. We gotta put a couple towels down here over the BCM. We don't wanna get get too ahead of ourselves and then have a problem. Alright, I'm gonna I guess try and just keep this on. It's usually been dry every time I've taken the towels out of here, so whatever I'm doing up there to keep things covered, knock on wood, has been good. But this is one of those few vehicles where they just leave all this open. And you can just take a towel and catch it over the wiring. Oh, come on, just a little farther. A little farther. What am I stuck on? Should be pretty simple. There we go. So I kind of droop this over all the wiring up here that leads to the BCM. And we should be good. C6 on my schedule for the first time today. Wish me luck. Ooh, good luck. That's that's a fun day for sure. Okay. Oh yeah, we sprayed that. So we're gonna squeegee that off. We're gonna do the outside. We got some film to install. Oh yeah, and these ones do that 100% of the time. Always do it. So a lot of people, when they cover these up and still have problems, they're being lazy about the way that they cover it up. So it's not just towels shoved into the bottom there. It's about leaving everything 
on the dash covered because who knows exactly where the water is getting in. Best I could theorize was the uh, speaker grills too. So anywhere there's a hole. <laughs> um, even the pillars. Like, this is an exposed area. Water still can droop down behind these pillars and stuff and work their way down. Remove the pillars in mirror plastic. Smart. goes down through the A pillar. Makes sense. <laughs> if I visit, I want to install, do some Tesla Model X windshield. You're talking about a windshield that I've literally never done. <laughs> Model 3s, Model Ys. I don't think I've had an X. I haven't, I actually haven't had the Model X in here. Everything's been like Model Ys and Model 3s. Is it going through the pillar, really? It's directly above the VCM. I love community source knowledge. That's so helpful. Okay, so that's all squeegeed off, clean. Oh God! The film train is super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. The film trainer, thank you for the five. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Good timing. <laughs> you can remove them by popping the plastic. There's one bolt on each. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. We might have to do that sometime. It would be helpful just to help. It would be helpful just to get them out of the way. What was that? I, what do you mean, what was that? What was what? <laughs> oh, the fog. Yeah, so every time somebody super chats, fog machines go off. When I have them on. <laughs> when I remember to turn them on. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a fun fun streaming challenge to try and <laughs> there goes another one. There it is, lagging a little behind. The film train is super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. The film trainer with another five, thank you. We appreciate that a lot. Yes, every time every time there's super chat, there's fog. Some they run on different systems, so one of them is way ahead of the other sometimes. I can switch it up to have them on the same system and just get a Redo everything. Let's make the fog machine go off all day. I wouldn't complain.
this rolled up. Sometime today. There we go. Over a thousand in super chats. Did I? There was a crazy day. Did it go that high? I forgot. Holy shit. That doesn't happen hardly ever. <laughs> Imagine if everybody donated a dollar. See, it's five dollars because... Because that is exactly what would happen. <laughs> so, I actually had to <laughs> make it cost something. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. Whatever... We had the balloon for a while. I really like doing that. Just, you know, giant explosions are kind of a problem when you have clients up front. So I never felt comfortable leaving it on all the time. So then we came up with fog machines. That was a lot of work. But those have been fun. People still want me to bring back the balloons. All right. See that? That's quicker coverage than I get out of a fan sprayer. My windshields, they depend on, obviously, film type, but... Oh, I wish I could remove this thing. This is why I didn't want to screw around with it. The whole thing is dipped down there. There we go. It's sticking. Now we're able to move this up. And there is a speck right there. Naturally. Okay, should be pretty good. Sure, that's all flush. 70 is such a hard film to see. Had to make sure we're all covered because having gaps right there would be a bad idea. I think we almost did. Let me jump over to the other side. What are your all prices for windshields? Mine's 250. Damn! My ceramic goes for 250 on a windshield. So if they're doing a full car, um, generally I've been doing windshields for like 130 uh, in Pro Classic, up to 200 um, in ceramic. If it's just a windshield, I'll do like 250 for ceramic, 150 for standard, and like 200 for carbon. So a lot of people here
lot of people here were getting full cars without windshields for like a long time. Now windshields are becoming a lot more common. But adding a windshield to a job was always pretty significant. So I give a little break on that if they're getting it. If they're like, how much for a full windshield? Okay, let's do that. Because I'd much rather do the full car with the full windshield than not. Even if I got to do it on an Audi, I suppose. <laughs> but that being said, I've done so many windshields lately. that when I don't have a windshield, I'm kind of happy right now, because then I, I just can kind of like kick back and relax. Oh, is that that one? Oh God, that's so annoying. Why you do this? Hang on, I see it. It's right here, bigger spec. Oh yeah, that was essentially a rock. Glad it didn't rip a chunk through the film. There we go. Nice. Super. Jose seventy eight Rios super shattered four dollars and ninety nine cents. How are you minute. doing today? Nice to watch you tint windows. Always learn something. <laughs> Shut up. It's like right because they're doing this too many times. Right there. I just can't catch a break right now. Okay, there we go. Don't forget the back window. <laughs> That'd be a fun window to forget. I've forgotten a quarter window before. I don't even know how. But the customer took the car and then called. Um, this was at the glass shop. Customer called and they're like, hey, uh, it looks like there's no tin on this quarter window. I was like, oh shit. Bring it back, we'll do it. Sorry. Happens enough with windshield strips. I always thought maybe you could get away with not doing 70% on a windshield. You know, because it's virtually clear. You're like, oh yeah, it's on there. Let that placebo kick in. <laughs> Except it would go completely wrong. No, it's definitely not tinted, I checked. Oh, shit. <sighs> Good, all right, let's check it. But Jose with the five, how are you doing today? Nice to watch you tint windows, always learn something. Thank you. Things are going pretty well. If we clean off this windshield and it looks good, then we're doing fantastic. And then if we turn on the truck and everything works okay, then we're doing amazing. If we turn the truck on and then all the wipers go crazy, then we're having a real bad day. I don't think that's gonna happen. Oh, did I really? I left it there. Could have just jumped up there and got it. I thought it was somewhere over here. I got enough of them. Just gotta try and up. Charge 300, only do 70%. Damn. See, it's just too big of my business to not do different shades on a windshield and, you know, and other films and whatnot.
Like, I don't know. I Around here, it would be kind of weird. One of my clients like, hey, I want to bring you my car. I want to do the windshield. Yeah, sure. Only 70, only ceramic, only this price. Now nah, I'll do, I'll do more than that. But I can understand. I think, uh, I think Alligator does the same thing. I think he only does 70%, and then he drives around with a 15% windshield. <laughs> Oh, is that part of the strategy? We only do 70%. We charge an obscene amount of money. And then we try not to tint it because it's so light, you can't even tell. Do you ever see one of those little spots in a windshield that you're like 50-50? You're like, mm, that could be a drip or it could be an obnoxious speck. I don't know yet. And then it turns out to be a drip. Safe. I do any shade, but nothing lower than 35. Just because I had it horrible night and rain. Yep, yep, yep. I do the same thing. There comes a point where it's just too much liability and depends on what you want to take on for your own company. Some guys don't do windshields unless it's like no paperwork, cash under the table, stuff like that. So every shop is going to have some different rules on that. It's like over serving at a bar. I only do dyed in carbon. Should add ceramic to your portfolio. I was installing Apex. I had no problems installing it. Looking good. I'm loving the 50% recommendation on the windshield. Oh, glad to hear it. The way I always tell people, 35 is my favorite shade on a windshield, but 35 looks really dark. And there's a few times where 35 is just, it's just pushing it on safety. 50%, 50% is a really nice in-between where you can tell it's tinted, it's not gonna block as much glare, but it's comfortable all times of day to drive with. You can't beat the ceramic. Blocks out a little bit of glare. It's just, it's definitely more comfortable. So, glad to hear you like it. It's super cool. We are all set on a windshield. So, we gotta do the back window now and the, uh, and the sunroof. It's 35 darker at night. Well, every film is gonna be darker at night like to see out of. So you're blocking 65% of the visible light. So everything comes at a little bit of a cost, but it's so much, like the, the way tint really works is, it's the same looking into it as it is looking out, except your light source during the day is the sun, so everything's, everything's nice and bright, and the cabin of the car is dark. So it's, it's just the same thing, like you're looking out through something that's naturally a little darker, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to see. But 35 is with like nice bright headlights, so if you have like most newer vehicles, they look great. 
and it's totally fine to see out of most of the time. The only times it gets a, it got a little sketchy for me was when it was like rainy, muggy conditions. Let's center this. That looks good. That looks really good. But you get what I mean? So like 35 on your front doors compared to 20 is definitely lighter. And it's it's pretty non-intrusive because it's on the side. You put it on a windshield, there's just a couple times that it's gonna get a little obnoxious. But overall, it was my favorite shade to drive with. But it makes your vehicle stand out a lot more. Like a lot. Oh, I'm getting that wet. <laughs> um, loving the windows. I left some horrible five-star feedback on Google for you. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's pretty much Google. Google and, like, I, I don't know if you can review on Apple Maps too, but I think you can like leave like a like on Apple Maps. Which shade do you think I had on the Rubicon? The, you know, it was tough to say. I think it was in the, honestly it was darker. It was darker than 50. It was either 40 or 35, right in that range. And most of the time it's really comfortable to drive with. There's just going to be those handful of times where it's going to be challenging for somebody to see out of it. But for the most part, you're totally fine. It was, I'll be honest, it was pretty apparent when I saw it. If I'm thinking of the right vehicle, anyways. Whoa. Sunroofs are not that hard to tint, but they're not that easy to get to. That's what makes them annoying. What's your name on Google? Oh, no, that's OK. If you haven't been here as a, as a client, it's all good. The muddy black Rubicon. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like 35 or 40, something, something in that range. No, I appreciate it. Uh, oh, it does have a dot matrix, why can't I see it? There. I need to put my tool belt back on. So sunroofs always uh, change in difficulty. based on how much room you have to work with on the inside. So this one actually gives a nice like quarter inch border around the entire thing. Thank you, Ram, for being so nice. It actually makes this a lot easier. Some, some roofs give you like no room. So if I could just like repel from the ceiling, it would be much easier to just like cut this out but you gotta like lean over and try and look at your line. It just makes it a little difficult. You could probably end up doing this on the inside too, but I'd probably put it like a crease or some dirt in it. So I'm just gonna do it this way. 
I don't get that many sunroofs, really. I can't reach that far. My Wrangler is almost ready. I'm halfway through the paint job at the moment. I have to strip the temp for you and you should have a clean zebra stripe. That's the one that was like, through all the mudding and stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I do a lot of roofs and windshields in Cleveland. Everybody wants dark, dark. That's good. I think. No, no, definitely not. So really we can do it this way. Like I said, I really wish I had a short roll. I just gotta shrink it the other way. Nobody really wanted a, like, so when I first started tinting, nobody really wanted their windshield tinted. It was just like, when you said, we'd call everything like a complete, complete tint. But a complete tent before would only consist of like all the sides in the back, no sunroof, no windshield. So I always thought it was a little weird calling it a complete tent. So now with so many people asking about windshields, when I quote somebody, I don't want them coming in thinking that, hey, that includes the, the sunroof and, and the windshield. Those are, those are extras, so I always specify now the sides and rear. And it also gives me an opportunity to always ask about the windshield. Windshield isn't first priority for everybody. So I always like to bring it up um, so then people start to think about it. It's like all the sides in the back, do you want to add a full windshield? Some people are like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And some people are like, oh, I didn't know that people are doing the full windshield. That sounds a little crazy. No, it's pretty common now. Oh, OK. You know, just bring up a conversation about it. Oh, I love this is 70, though. <laughs> so much easier to see. This is with limo. No thanks. Yeah, I definitely mention the front windshield uh, if we get in the ceramic territory. Like, I'll always bring it up. But if we're in the carbon or ceramic conversation, 100%. Because as the driver, you're going to feel so much coming through these windows and the windshield, because that's where you're sitting. So you want those covered the most. So it's a great way to, uh, to add one. So even sunroofs have some curve. Rather than okay, 
good at sticking. If I had a short roll, I'd just do it sideways and shrink along the long edge. That would be easier for shrinking. There's not, you don't have to shrink a lot on these, but causing all the fingers that want to go out this way to come here is going to make the fingers a little bit bigger. So I'm cutting um, mostly in the middle. If I want my pattern to be a little wider, I'll cut it towards the outside. If I want it to be a little slimmer, I'll cut it more towards the inside. So something like this, I have decent edges to work with, so it's not as important to be super precise on that, just as long as I'm definitely on the line. And then... Yeah, sunroofs are just big... Sunroofs are just big quarter windows, that's all they are. So what's gonna make a sunroof difficult is just the edges a lot of time on the inside and the fact that it's facing the ceiling, but you know, it's pretty accessible, especially when they do a panoramic roof this way where they split it up into two, um, two reasonable sized pieces rather than one giant piece. The glass aid is to see and, and yeah, definitely to protect the glass when I'm cutting. With the sunroof, um, it's a helpful guide for me too. So I just put the tape line around it and then I can see where my edges are a little bit easier. Yeah, something like a Model 3 is going to be in an entirely different ballpark than this. This is miles easier than that Model 3. So we unrolled this way, so everything's got to be pushed to these sides and shrunk for whatever we have to shrink anyways. Should be pretty good. So we'll do this one, and we'll go ahead and do the other side. God, I love trucks. There's so much, <laughs> so much walking. I could imagine tinning this if it was one big piece. <laughs> it would definitely make it more challenging, yeah. So like the Mustang Mach-E also has a giant glass roof. So just like a mildly helpful tip here, I always try and keep the orientation from the sunroof to the glass board the exact same. So then when I peel it, I just, I know which way it's gonna face. If I just pulled it off and then flipped it around or something accidentally, I wouldn't, like it's, it's pretty similar. <laughs> so it might be difficult to figure out which way it goes without completely screwing up your piece. So just remember which way you have it facing. I'm gonna go grab a couple of towels because we gotta, we gotta soak the roof. Um, would you roll it like the windshield if it were one piece? I actually might just do a roll on this one too. Wait, where's my, there they are. Let's get these guys here. 
Oh, I thought there was two. Where's the other one? And we can use these two. These things are pretty handy. I forget to use them more often than I do. Just big old towel seat covers. They just go over the headrest. And then all this stuff here in the middle. Just cover this up. We'll just go cover the other side too. Not sure if this has been asked, but do you warranty sunroof tint? Um, so, yeah, I, but there's not much that can go wrong with it. So, like, I'm, I'm not worried about it, about it pe peeling, bubbling, or fading. So, but if any of that happened, absolutely. We'll do that. Let's let's just scrape it, scrape it and towel it. Will tint work on Lexan or plexiglass? No, no, it's gonna end up bubbling up. The plexi actually does something called off-gassing from what I understand. So as it heats up like the the tint will actually bubble up. You need something else over it to make it work. I actually did the, uh, I don't know what it was, like plastic roof on a, uh, on a Fiat 500. And the whole thing bubbled. <laughs> really bad. It was one of those things where like, I heard it can happen and I'm like, yeah, whatever, I'll just do it. And then I learned, I learned what can happen. All right, dog, where'd my squeegee go? There it is. See, you do some back windows. Ugh. The hard to get to spaces. Yeah, those are never fun. Would Lux work? Yeah, Lux should be okay. I haven't ever seen it in person though, but some guys will install that. I just haven't done it myself. So yeah, it should be fine. I think it's pretty clear. So let's go grab some film. Are we gonna roll it? Or are we just gonna say screw it and peel it? What am I gonna do? Installs more like a shrink wrap. So Lux is more like a uh, a vinyl uh, than like a window tint. So yeah, you're gonna do stretching and post heating on something like that. but oh my god should have just peeled the whole thing I think at this point we might just peel the whole thing okay so if I roll it up this way 
which is probably going to be a little easier for me to do. And it's going to be passenger side first to the driver's side. So the sunroof is going to be about the same as the sides, so like privacy 20%. Just want you guys to know how much of a bad decision this seems now. Didn't roll up perfectly straight, but I think we got it. Okay, you're kidding me. That was weird. I'm just gonna stick to what I know sometimes. <laughs> Holy shit. Here, I think reverse rolling is just gonna be, oh yeah, easy peasy, and it should be. It just didn't seem to go that way. Oh, and that's in the, I thought that, I could have sworn that was in the glue. It was trying to unroll on me. Shame on you, sunroof. Yeah, that was, uh, that was screwy. If this was a big piece, it would have been completely screwed. Just full disclosure there. I'm trying to even look at it. It's so light. Eh. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. You made it look easy. <laughs> They said too soon. That I would call kind of a sloppy insulation. That end especially, the way that it kind of like flopped towards the edge and then fell back off. I never like to see that ever. So, um, Look at my bearings here for a sec. I'm gonna pull it off and just cut a new one. <laughs> it looks clean staring straight at it and then when you hit the light right, I can see some speckling in it. It's not super happy with it. I'm just gonna recut it. I think that, is that weak enough? Shit, that might be small. So. Grab our piece here. I'm just gonna carry it in. Screw fancy techniques. <sighs> Ooh, look at that. Look at our. Oh wait. Oh, we spoke to you. Oh, no, we're good. We're good. 
<laughs> oh, this is so close. All right, we're going to cut this back out again. Peel it. Or snap it. Peel it. We'll be better for it. Ooh, I can see my fret line, too. How about that? That's a happy side effect. see I can see Apple Maps but I can't use it without an iPhone oh that's Apple for you that's okay they have like a weird rating system it's kind of like just thumbs up I think there's no like written reviews what was nice is you can like at least add pictures and stuff but it's kind of screwy in the way that it does it. Like I, I added the picture of a truck on my Apple Maps profile. Ooh, we almost trailed off there. And then it wouldn't let me add any other pictures and then I had to like reach out to support kind of and it was just a big mess. Schmansky super shatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. How would you handle this? Custy smokes tons in his BMW. The bottom of the driver window peels up once a year. Am I stuck redoing for free forever? Thank you so much for the super. Uh, well, you should be able to roll your window up and down as many times as you want without ever risk of having it peeled. So. Yes. I mean, you never know who's going to use your, their windows that frequently, but window tent is made. If it's installed right, um, it's made to last. So probably need to figure out how to go a little bit farther down on that one because it's, it's all that it's doing is catching on a seal. So if you can get up below that next seal, then you're never gonna have that problem. So tuck it a little farther down, pull the seal if you need to or something. I mean, I've had that on, on BMWs before. I just retent it and try and go farther down if I didn't go down far enough or something happened. Cause that's, Yeah, that's just one of those things about the tinting world that, like... That sucks. <laughs> but that's just kind of part of it, so... Sorry, I was listening to that, that comment. Yeah, it sounds like super shattered. I know. I love that voice. That voice is great. I wish I had the same voice on my headset, but there was no way to make that happen. See, so we're just gonna peel this whole thing. <laughs> just carry it in now. Screw that reverse rolling bullshit. 
No, I'm kidding. I love doing it. I just couldn't believe that it turned out to be such a mess on this one. So this is the way that I usually install a sunroof. But it's such like a straightforward piece that like it makes sense to reverse roll it just to try and keep things a little nicer. But two mil film holds together pretty well too, so uh seems like this is fine. But where you're gonna have the most dirt on anything, this no matter how many times you clean it. Whenever you have the film exposed and it basically presses down and then it falls back, it sucks back a bunch of shit with it. Doesn't matter how many times you clean it. Always expect there to be speckles in that area without like reflushing your film out. Sometimes they're real small. Sometimes they're hard to see, but so when I didn't see anything, I was like, either I just got real lucky or I can't see them right now. So I'm trying to readjust some viewing angles a little bit and then like, oh yeah, there, there's that crap. That's kind of what I thought. But I was a little bit more carefree with it because it's a sunroof. And the hard part about the sunroof is just getting the pattern. Once you have the pattern, the just carrying it in and installing it is, is going to be pretty simple unless it's, again, like we were talking about, a giant panoramic, like the big, like one big solid piece of glass. Then I probably would just take a little bit more time. I'd probably reverse roll it because it's a big, big piece to carry. I would just, I would have taken a little bit more time, not just like spray it and roll it up and there it goes and oh shit, we made a mistake. That's what happens when I'm careless. So we're a little overlapped on this edge, but I got lots of space, trim it off. And trim it off, um, like I get things squeegeed up to it and then try and hold it and then trim it off rather than try and keep pressing it and then having water feed back. There's always shit that's going to come from your edges. doesn't matter how many times you clean them, like I said. There's always stuff that can come from the edges. Anytime you squeegee up to it and things fall back, you can have big, big problems that way. Uh oh. Cannon. Surprise. Just one battery down. Recharge. Approximately how long is the tint supposed to last? Lifetime warranty. I don't know. Check the uh, the warranty of your films. I don't know if there's actually a limit. I haven't read the fine print on it, but you know, if something came back ten years from now and was bubbled, um, you know, that's part of lifetime warranty there, in my opinion. But if the lifetime warranty said. 10 years and it was 11 years, then technically it's not covered under under warranty, but they're, uh, they're technically limited lifetime warranties. But the important thing is to take care of your people. At that point in time, most people will have changed the vehicle and it would be a very edge case where somebody would come back with any type of issue if you have a really good long-lasting film.
Most people change out their vehicles or, I don't know, forget where they got them tinted. So like, even with crappy warrantied film, it's only so much of a problem, but the real problem is if you have a catastrophic failure within a year or two, that's where you're really gonna open yourself up to some shit. There's just a couple little spots that I gotta let dry out here. So I can't shrink these. I can only keep the heat farther back and try and swing some air under these dots here. Just let this whole thing, give it time to dry out. So I'm gonna get it started and then I'm gonna kind of move to the next piece and I'll come back and I'll finish touching this up. Just definitely getting this as started as I can. I saw a couple of fingers popping up, so. It'll be stubborn until the last little bit of moisture is like completely dried out. With a sunroof, <laughs> it's just level so the water sits here. It doesn't like, it's not vertical so it doesn't trail down. It just sits on the edges. All right, looking good though. Let's just do the other. Well, we're on the roof, let's just do the other piece. And we'll knock out that back window. Why can't you shrink? So the way that we set the roll was this way, straight across. So the only spots that we can shrink then is gonna be this side and the other side. Along the edges, um, it's gonna peak. It's gonna look really, really bad. Can't shrink sideways. If I flip the roll this way, then I could only shrink out these sides. So you can only ever shrink um, this, the, the way that the film's pointed, basically. That's why people get really messed up back windows <laughs> when they first start. Start shrinking things out the side accidentally. Messes up the entire window. That is a good fact to know. It gets mentioned. <laughs> I never heard that. It doesn't get like, so it, it gets, it's kind of like a very known thing that doesn't get mentioned all the time because it's kind of annoying to repeat. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of small rules and things to know with window tinting that, that doesn't always get mentioned. That's why I just watch as many videos as you can and you'll pick up all these little things from one video to the next and just watch as much as you can. You never know which video is gonna have that little tidbit of info. But yeah, a good way to look at window film is like imagine the entire roll is like pre-stretched. And when you apply heat, it shrinks back together. So with these door windows, I could have flipped the roll sideways and shrunk it on the side. Just the bottom edges, especially on the back doors, are much wider, so I prefer to shrink these on the bottom when I can. So, 
sure I got a roll somewhere here. A little piece of film. Yeah, let's check this thing out. So, if I take the heat gun, and I think this is my flat edge, so this is the side that should curve and shrink normally. Yeah, that's all normal. That shrunk fine. But if I go to try and shrink, let's say I had a finger on this side here. See that little guy? See this finger right here? Let's try and shrink it. It does that. See how that looks really, really weird? When you shrink it the wrong way, it peaks together real funny. Where this way, that'll shrink. Well, <laughs> it's flat there, see? So this is what happens on the side, and then you go to shrink it, and then it just keeps doing this. You shrink it more, you shrink it more. It just doesn't work out. It does something completely backwards. Okay. Finally, I get to say hi. I always miss your live videos. Well, welcome. Good to have you. So if we could shrink like big windows on the side too, I don't, I'm sure it would make them easier one way or another. Ooh. A little sideways. What are some good companies for tinting if you're just starting off? Sun Distributing, Tint Depot, Tint Stuff, those ones. Those are all good companies. You're welcome. There's good films out there. You don't need to be a like registered business. You don't have to be tinting for a number of years, you know, because you got to start somewhere. Um, but those companies in particular, they all carry really, really good films. They just don't have giant branding presence, really. Is Lexan good for starting or is it just bad in general? So I'm gonna post a video either today or tomorrow um, that's gonna show the differences. It's not great if you're learning shrinking. So there's a lot of people that, that will recommend it. It's good budget film. Um, but you'll have a hell of a time trying to learn shrinking on it. But you can do everything else with it. I guess that's kind of how I should Maybe frame it from now on. Where's my? Did I put it back in the box? <laughs> so you guys will see in the in the video tomorrow. Oh, that's where we put it. Of course. You guys will see it in the video tomorrow um, or today, whenever I post it. I just gotta do a, an explanation for it. So one of the students at the last class that we ran, um, he bought a lot of Lexan actually. He spent like $1,500 on a bunch of it. And he's had a hard time uh, shrinking. He said, I can do most 
everything else. Um, like doors was definitely like a good thing to go over. Like we went over everything in the class. But what he was really focused on was shrinking. And put the Pro Classic up on the glass and then he got kind of used to it. And he's like, I've got a bunch of Lex in. Can I bring that in and try that? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Big, big difference. <laughs> it essentially caused him to shrink completely. Like, it's just, you got to be way more aggressive with it. And in the beginning, you're still trying to understand the concepts of it. So you can, you can, it shrinks okay, but you just got to be, able, you just got to know how much more aggressive to be with it because it just moves way, way, way slower. And the heat that you put on it in the beginning, it'll be in the video, but the heat that you put on it in the beginning, it's, things will go nice and smooth, cool, and then you get halfway through, things start slowing down, and you get in like the last quarter of the window and you feel like you're shrinking it. But then the next thing you know, you've creased it and you don't really understand what happened. So I'm gonna do the best I can to try and illustrate that point with this video. I have some clips from the class uh, of, <laughs> of one attempt with Pro Classic and then another one with the, uh, with the Lexan. So shrinking is always a tough thing to learn, no matter what film that you're using. But I think the summary of it is basically going to be you start shrinking one way, which is very similar to what you see in the videos. And the hardest parts are always when the film bunches up together. So if you're not expecting that, you'll put the same amount of heat on it and then you'll start to cart it down, and then before you know it, you'll work yourself into a crease. You just gotta be a lot more aggressive with it. You do a good job of explaining, thank you. It just doesn't, <laughs> so I shrunk a charger back window with it, and then put Pro Classic on it and shrunk it again. So what you'll see is the film shrinks slower, but it's not going to look like things are going that much differently. I really wish it was a little bit more apparent. But uh, you'll see the little clip. Um, you see the little clip from like when the student tried it out and had the problems with it. Oh, well, thank you. I think we're out of fog. I think I gotta fill it up. <laughs> Brandon Mills That's super kinda scary. four dollars Thank and ninety nine cents. Let me turn this one off. Is it this one? No. It's the other one. There we go. We'll leave that one on because that one is still okay. I haven't put fog in it in like a month. And people have used a lot of fog, so I gotta add some more. Brandon! Brandon with a five! Thank you for the super sticker. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Was it the Pure Max line? Uh, it's the HSA carbon. So I don't think so. But this is a point I'm gonna have to try and bring up too that I'm probably gonna forget. Here, here's, here's what keeps happening to people, and this is really, really what I want to try and prevent a little bit more. Somebody goes, hey, I'm just starting out with tint. Does anybody have some good films they can recommend? And then a bunch of people just say, use Lexan. But they don't really specify. You know, it's the same thing with like GeoShield or something. Like, what film do you use? I use GeoShield. Well, they've got a whole bunch to pick from. So I use multiple films from them. So
So it's like there's a lot of info to kind of there's a lot of info to definitely like re relay for every one of those questions, but the one that really gets annoying is like people just shout out <laughs> Lexin. And then so somebody goes on the site, they don't know which one to buy, or they just buy whatever, and then they don't understand the problems that they're having. And then they're like, well, I, this doesn't look like the videos, and like this is, just isn't going well. Like, what the hell is, hell is going on? So I just wish things were a little bit more clear on that front. I don't know if they ever can be completely, but... I'll put up another video. When are you gonna test Coolview? Uh, never? I don't know, I don't have a reason to. This is the first time anybody's asked me about, about them. I don't know much about them either. Well, we got a little more space back here. This is kind of nice. Bigger piece, though. I don't know. There's there's like a few film film brands that I get asked about a ton. So those ones make sense for me to post some videos. With other like I don't know. I I've never really known how to how to do other film brands quite as much. Like a long time ago. Stack sent me an email. They're like, hey, could you do like a film review? I'm like, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how to do it in a way that's actually interesting. Like, because there's a lot of films that are like, yeah, it's fine. It works good. Color, shrink, seems to go good. Don't know how long it's going to last. That's going to be like 90... But it's gonna, it's gonna be like most film reviews. It's kind of a hard thing to do because there's not enough obvious differences from one to the other. So like with a lot of these companies, like, I don't know. With a lot of film companies, you're, you're probably getting decent film. Like with a lot of reputable film companies, you're probably fine. They're just, it's gonna be under a different brand. Um, <laughs> if you learn to l shrink Lexan, you can shrink anything. That is true, probably. The part what it, like what really I saw throw people off is like people just need a win. You have to like successfully shrink a back window to understand everything there is to like shrinking a back window. So when you're first starting and you have like a intermediate back window and you just try and you try and you try and no matter what you do, it's just not happening. It gets incredibly frustrating and you're not making any progress. Where if you can take a step back with an easier window or some easier shrinking film, then you get, you start to get those concepts down. And therefore you go, and then when you go back to that harder window with that film, you understand a lot more of what you need to change or what you did to make things go right. 
That's the biggest issue that I've seen. And I saw, I saw it firsthand um, from a couple of students. They were just, <laughs> they were focused on doing the most challenging thing at the class. And they're like, well, if we do this, then we can do the rest. And it's like, yeah, but you're still learning. And it's been hours. <laughs> and you're getting really frustrated. How about we step on over to the ones that are a little easier? But at that point, they're like, they got so invested that it was hard for them to step back. But they finally did. They went to like a couple of the easier windows. And then when they came back to the harder window, it was all of a sudden like, oh, I get it more. You need some of that. Installing it without rolling it looked like it was easier. Yeah, if you know how to handle it. it it's just a big piece of film. Um, so it's like just the challenge is then trying to hold it without creating any creases and stuff. It is just more straightforward. It's what I do with back windows. Um, but I really like how smooth a reverse roll is. I just It, it started going sideways on me. So this is what I do for most windows. So that's going to look like it's easier for me to do. Cool. Sunroof is not quite done, but it's applied. So I'm going to let it sit for a little bit longer. I'm going to dry out the edges, wipe everything off. In the meantime, let's pull these headrests do some back windows. You know, I gotta say, it's really nice to have the back window being the last thing to do on a truck. Usually I save the sunroof and the windshield. But now, now we're gonna do the easier part. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, I know what I need. I think I need this guy. I don't even know if I really have to take these out. But those ones come out easy. Some of them, they don't grease up. And then they just stick like crazy. I rewatched your AutoZone video and that got me started. <laughs> I appreciate that. Are those your car keys? Yes. Yeah, I got this little like keychain knife and a Tech Deck screwdriver. Yeah, see this. There's two little like push spots. And they both have to be released just right. Sometimes these do not go very well. So I get this little like pocket knife, it's super small. Um, and then, where is it? Little Tech Deck screwdriver here. So this is great for a lot of headrests too. That's why I keep it on here. It's just those little push pin ones. I might leave this one in. Oh, there we go. Finally. Ugh. See what I mean? This one didn't seem like it was greased up very much compared to the other one. The other one just popped right out. Some of them are easy. Some of them suck. Gotta love that little metal ridge that they put on here. Okay, so we need the we need the 20% roll. This is 50. Pro Nano, 20% against this guy. Hmm? 
Where do we got to put this? We got to put it all the way over here? Really? 40s all the way over there? Oh, I guess so. It's like not even 40 <laughs> with where those liners roll up. Oh, let me do this. Okay. Cannon. Film cut. It's 130. Oh, we're actually doing pretty good. Considering we're adding a full sunroof to it. Tint. So somewhere in this range. Uh, oh, they actually, do they put it under RAM? Oh, look at them. Look at that. See, when you have like a 40 inch roll here, you got the plotter. Oh, actually, you could have done that with a 36. Look at that. See? Is it a crew? I don't think it's going to make a difference, but we'll switch it. I always forget the difference between crew and quad. And when it gets into Ford trucks, those get especially confusing because they're like super crew. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know which one's which. Oh, yeah, this is great. We'll be able to cut all these out together. I'll use a 36 to double cut on cars. You can use a 40 still. You save just a little bit of film if you can make a 36 work, though. What do you think? You think it's going to work today? I think we got pretty good chances. Yeah, this is film cut. Plotter software. We got some patterns. Now we need a tool belt. I think I set it down here. Perfect. You're watching it, so it doesn't mess up. 100%. I swear, the times plotters mess up is when you look away. This is for any plotter that I've ever used. Most of the time, they can be OK. And then there'll be this time where you just like, you know, everything's going great. And then all of a sudden you look back and it's just crunching your film. And the plotter, <laughs> so this is a feature of like the graph tech um, and probably Roland. Any, any one of the plotters that has the little eye, um, it's got this feature where it'll retract the film back into the machine up to the edge of that film, as soon as it sees a light difference, it'll stop. So when you're plotting film, it always keeps a, a gauge on if everything fell off track. So sometimes with a better machine, it doesn't do quite as much damage, but it's still not fun when it happens. Look at that. I like that.
I've cut these out by hand quite a few times on stream. I still cut them on the inside. Um, if you don't have anything in the way on the outside, you can still, you can cut them out on the outside pretty okay too. Just a lot of times there's tonneau covers. He actually asked, um, so he was like, hey, I got a, a bed cover. Would that screw you up if I put it on? It used to, but not anymore. Do you mind offering advice on how to price cards while I'm still learning? Um, so like if you have friends and family and, and you just like need vehicles to practice with, then sometimes just getting the vehicles and just doing it at your own expense is kind of like a, a necessary thing just to like get your hands on some more cars. But if, if really like you've tinted some cars, you're doing okay, it's just taking you longer or whatever to tint. There's no reason you have to charge, you really have to charge less or anything. Because at the end of the day, if you use like a, a decent film and the job looks good, there's no reason you can't charge what anybody else charges. It's a good job. It'll, it'll set precedent for the rest of like your clients I've tinted six cars now and it's taking average four to five hours. Just charge full price. That's that you you sounds like you're making great progress. You're you're honestly when you get like a handful of cars under your belt and you're doing okay, it's just taking a while. Like no worries. Because what'll happen is like if you just start undercharging too much, um you're going to be farther along than you think. And then you're just going to have people coming to you and you're going to work yourself into a cheap business. Or like you're going to, you're going to have a hard time pulling yourself out of that price bracket. So if you just charge like a, a fair rate for it, then like there's no reason you can't. Nobody could like, <laughs> seriously. You can have two cars side by side. If both of them look good, are you gonna be able to tell who did what? No. <laughs> if both of them look good, then like what is there to complain about? So you can definitely charge. Oh, you're welcome. But yeah, that's awesome. When you're like, like on your first or second car, you've done like your own personal car, then it's like, okay, you're really focusing on experience. When you get a handful of cars under your belt and you kind of like, when you, when you get to like a certain point, you're, you're doing a handful of cars is just like, you're a little more confident. You're like, okay, I can do it. I'm gonna mess up a few times. It's just gonna take a while. Then, then by all means, like, you're trying to put out good work. People will pay for that. Then it's just a matter of building up your client base over time and, and really showing the customers that you care about the work that you're putting out. That speaks volumes. Saturated areas. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> be a master tenor with watching all these videos be a master tenor with zero experience <laughs> yeah speed will come with time y you do have to kind of give speed um, a kick in the ass yourself a little bit though because I really didn't speed up Un until I was like forced to. That was working at my dad's company. Where I was like, I need more time to do these cars. And they're like, we got bills to pay. And they would ignore everything that I said and just put more cars on the board. <laughs> so I just kind of like, you know, I'd yell and scream and suck it up a little bit and 
hammer out some more cars. But there was definitely stuff that was getting left by the wayside. But you can put out a really, really high quality tint job in a, in a short amount of time if you push yourself to do it. Ignore my speed. I take my sweet time right now. I'm like reasonably placed, but I spend so much more time being distracted by the stream and trying to do things a little more particular. I waste a lot of time compared to like when I was tinning for the glass shop in my dad's place and other places. Like I didn't, I didn't have this time. Now I'm like, hey, let's do a ceramic job and let's spend all day on it. <laughs> Things have changed a lot. Doing this as a side hustle, trying to quit construction to do tinning. Oh, that's super cool. Good luck, man. You can get it. If you're determined to do it, it's kind of a, like, I don't know what the right saying for it is, but like, oh, what would I, like statistically impossible that you're not gonna get it. If you try enough, you'll get it. Like, if I keep trying a door window over and over and over again, eventually I'm going to get it. So, like, you'll get it. So, I will dog plotted patterns for door windows all day, but there's a lot more consistently consistency when it comes to um, like back windows and things with ceramic borders. And I'm not trying to, like I don't, I could be, I could do this edge here, here, anywhere in between. As long as I'm over the glass, the uh, no gaps, as long as I'm, I have no gaps, I can go as close or as far as I want. That's why they work out so well for windows like these. And because it's like machine cut, everything is pretty awesome. Like all the lines are like robotically straight. But when I'm butting up to the exposed edge on like a door window, that's where they just, uh, it's trying to get that curve, that perfect curve when it hasn't been programmed to that specific car. It's possible to change careers. I used to do house painting, now I'm a full-time tinner. Nice, that's awesome. Painting. I hate painting walls goes so slow. I'm really like inefficient at it. <laughs> but I haven't obviously haven't done it much. You know what I really what jobs drive me crazy uh, that I can that I can do is like I can mow the lawn and I can paint walls. I just I just hate it. <laughs> I'm like I grab a paint roller, start putting paint like so we painted the showroom up there. It's not that great because we, we just got sick of it, but it's good enough. It works, it does the job. But I get like, I get through like halfway through one wall and I'm like, oh, this is going great. And then I'm like, then it's like another hour and I've hardly done any more work, it feels like. I'm like, ah, I wanna be done. Oh my God, I caught a stream high. <laughs> It's easy to paint. It's not fun for me to paint.
painting is more than applying paint. Right, true that. Mudding. <laughs> Ugh. Yep, I don't like... I don't want to do that. Sanding. It's messy. Yeah, I'm good. I got lucky with tint. I just kind of like fell into it. It was all by luck, really. It's the prep that comes before it. <laughs> yep. The sanding and mudding and seaming and all that stuff. I don't even know, but yeah, not fun. Imagine if they, yeah, I, I don't know what I would be doing, but it would be something technical. I almost changed careers. I was looking pretty heavily into, uh, oh, what was it called? Um, like security systems testing and stuff like that. That sounded like an interesting career field in like the tech space. But things in that field change so rapidly. Like uh, web design. Web design was like super popular and a lot of people were jumping on it and it made good money. And then all of a sudden all these companies came out with templates and making it easy and accessible. And then all of a sudden like that whole field then starts to change really quickly. But just like anything, um, you know, tinning gets tedious, tech stuff gets tedious, like it, it all in some respect gets tedious, so what, what made this really fun for me was doing the channel alongside of it. I tried glass aid a couple times and it always moves on me, so I switched to using a light on the inside and button under the film, and I pre preferred that over glass aid. Well, we're gonna ban you. <laughs> no, that's cool. So it's probably shifting on you. Um, if you if all you do is wipe off the glass, it's and like you leave little smears behind, it's not gonna stick ultra well because there's like gonna be like a grease or something underneath it. I found I always, you always see me scrub the glass and then squeegee it off. That'll make it stick really well. But as far as the button trick goes, um, I never quite liked it, but I can definitely appreciate it. My cutting style is like a little all over the place. So like I start cutting this way and then I'll, I'll continue like from this side and then bring it back over. So like with the button, I gotta put it here and then keep forcing myself to keep going along that way. And there was like a handful of times, actually there's a lot of times, I just, I wasn't as patient with it. But a button is definitely a safe way to cut on the glass, so. Good job. That's the point. Just don't want to see people damaging glass. All right, so that's all good. Let's check the sunroof. Oh no, a finger. Is this the only stream you're doing today? Yeah. This is a big one. I did a whole truck. 
with a sunroof and a windshield. I'm streamed out, man. Are you done? Yeah, actually. You're late, though. <laughs> Just a little bit more touch up. Yeah, I even I even told him. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna do the whole thing. And then here we are wrapping up the rest of it. It went pretty good. A little hiccup at the beginning. Um there's just been a few. <laughs> There's been a few lately that have just been like one little dumb mistake on top of another one. This type of stuff gets real old. Because there's, there really is a lot, and it's, tin is subjective, so, you know, I genuinely have to put out a good job, and if there's a problem with it, then I have to end up redoing it, which does happen. Why don't you do customer reactions? I just don't put people on the spot like that. I don't know, this was all kind of new. Like even getting to this point was very, like it's very unique and different. There's no, no shops to really look at and have any type of a, like a model for even doing this. So some, some clients, they come in from watching the, uh, the live streams and the channel and some have no idea it exists. So I'm kind of, I float this line between being a, a regular shop and then being a channel at the same time, but. It snowed. It's much harder. <laughs> it's much harder getting on this front one than the back one. Let's go to the other side. Let's put that down. We don't need that. Nice. Well, except for those. See, a couple little water pockets, like finger water pockets. So you gotta press those out. Sunroofs always sit in this flat state. So like the water kind of like sits here on the edges. It doesn't really drain away. And when you have a frit border,
um, all the water sits in those dots and then the water will kind of like start to feed back and then fill up a little puddle again. So a little bit extra touch up with sunroofs if everything hasn't laid completely flat. Where do you get the microfibers? Costco. They have a good bundle. They're like plushy enough and come in a big enough pack and still like absorb a lot of water. There's a lot of like really big microfiber packs, but the towels don't absorb water for shit. Costco's like good enough. How do you wash them? Um, I throw them in the wash. I use regular detergents. Um, I just don't use excessive heat and I don't use dryer sheets. Don't use dryer sheets on microfibers. They will ruin them. So with microfibers, they, uh, they, they literally have like lots of little microfibers on them. So the dryer sheets coat those fibers and make your towels feel really waxy. So you don't want that. <laughs> I didn't know why the towels at the time, like I, I'd throw dryer sheets with them and then they just like whatever and then I looked up one day how to like wash microfibers and I got a new pack and I washed them that way and then after I washed them I was like oh these feel really really good still. And then later on accidentally threw in a dryer sheet with like another batch of them and you can just feel them after. They like, when you get used to feeling, like you know, they kind of like stick to your fingers a little bit. You can definitely tell when you've, uh, you've used fabric softener on it. Yeah, don't use fabric softener on them, it's bad. Don't do it. Check out the uh, the rag company. They've got a really good channel. They do lots of towels because they're the rag company. Glad you done the live stream. Well, thank you. Glad you liked it. This one was a lot of work, but it's, I don't know. It's not that, I've done so many of these trucks, so these are pretty straightforward for me. So <laughs> I'm glad everything went pretty well. I needed a win. We were messing up too many times on like dumb stuff, like three windows in a row, having problems, and it's just like, man, can you just get something tinted, please? 
I would get so many of these trucks. Tinning, especially for other companies. Like, I've done quite a few Rams on stream. So, like, this is considered just regular work. You have to be good at and quick at this type of stuff. here for a day. <laughs> Trying to make sure the edges are set on a sunroof. See, this is one of those, one of those pieces, like leaving this outside, giving it a, like a good half hour to an hour to, to really dry out would be helpful. Problem is always time. Oh yeah, for sure. That uh, that's often what happens with tinning. It becomes a uh, exactly what you said, domino effect. One thing messes up, throws you off off your game a little bit, then something else. And when one thing goes wrong, then everything goes wrong. So like a door window, and then the plotter, and then this, and then that. So there's lots of little things that I could try from things that I see in like the Facebook group or, or wherever else, like suggestions like, hey, why don't you install this way, or why don't you do this or that? Sometimes when it isn't broke, don't try and fix it or change it up too much because that's when that stuff really starts to happen. So get very good at doing things a particular way. And then when you have time to, then, then play around with some different, different techniques, different styles, and figure out what you like best. So if I can afford to do it, then I'll try something, I'll try something a little unique or when people have questions or whatnot. Yeah, sure, let's play around with that, why not? We're having a good day. But sometimes, I just need a win. So for everybody here that's trying to learn, try and figure out one style that you really like and try and follow that until you get it down. And then when you get that down and you're really confident with it or more confident with it, then start messing around with some other stuff too. That's totally fine. But if you're like mixing 50 different styles of window tinning together, like, oh, I saw this one guy do this and I saw this one guy do that and oh, this looked really cool and that, <laughs> you never focus on one thing and then you don't do anything right. Cool, man. Look at that. Oh, and we didn't even record a video, damn. This looks good. So look at that. We did 70 on the front, which doesn't even look tinted. I mean, it does under this light a little bit. 20 on the fronts, which is what most people do to match the rears. Then we did 20 over the rear, which brings that rear down to about 5%. Then if we look through here. We got that panel sunroof. 
All in 70? Yeah, buddy. That's why I only watch your tinting videos. That's why I, the way I'm not bouncing around. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Cannon. Nice. We did it. We did another one. Well, that was fun. You guys have a good time. I did. Spam is taken care of, thank you. See, it doesn't happen very often. Every once in a while, a bot will come in here and blow up the chat a little bit. All righty, so we're gonna shout out some super dupers. Big thank you to Brandon, Brayden, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, wait, what? Hang on. Why is it mixing subscriptions in here? How do we filter? There we go. Cool. All right, so big shout out to Brandon, Brayden, Jose, Film Trainer, Film Trainer, Window Tint Life. Oh, yeah, we got to talk, don't we? Daniel Reyna. Thank you so much. Big one from Window Tinting Life, 50 bucks. Thank you very much. I enjoyed the back window tutorial I posted the other day. Really picked up on shrinking. Good, glad to hear it. Yeah, we got another one. <laughs> There's been so many shrinking videos lately. It's, it's one of the most helpful things. Um, sorry. Did somebody else sign up for the class? Oh my god, is it full? I gotta check on this really quick. Oh my god, it's all full. The whole, all my classes are completely sold out. Thank you. That's exciting. And now what? <laughs> so June just filled up. Somebody booked two spots yesterday, and then somebody booked the last spot today. Damn, wow. All right, that's super cool. I haven't opened up July yet. I opened up June, and I think I still, do I still have May listed on there? I do. Oh, no, no, April. I still had April listed on here. Okay, I gotta get rid of the other one. Oh, nice job on the successful tin classes. Thank you. Yeah, they've been going really well. I didn't really think I'd have this many people, but I I know I'm I don't want to handle more than six personally, so maybe I can try and work on getting another instructor here or something, and then open it up to a few more. I just don't want it to be super busy either. I like keeping them pretty focused. I finally understood what you were talking about the fingers when you heat up and the film drapes sideways. Oh, cool! Glad to hear it. Yeah, so we're going to be posting a video here pretty soon, either today or tomorrow. And that video is going to go, um, it, it's going to basically be an entire charger back window. You're going to see it um, be shrunk twice. And one of them is going to be with uh, Lexan, and the other one's going to be with, uh, with Pro Classic. So you really get to see the differences and not the differences. <laughs> on that one. So it's going to look similar. It's just going to seem slower. But hopefully, I can get the point across that you just got to use a lot more heat. That was what I was trying to illustrate. So that'll be posted soon. But all righty, my dudes. Thank you for hanging out today. It was fun. And thank you to this client for bringing this all the way out here. I know he's got some stuff to do today. So. What are you doing with the Expel? I want to do a comparison. I would like to get 
another film before I do it, but I don't know. I, I should just put out the word in my group and see what I can get. Um, I would love to have Crystalline or like a Lumar Pinnacle series. And then we could do like just with a couple of big name um, super ceramics all on one windshield and just see. Because that is something that you, you just don't see. When somebody pulls in a brand, they pull in their super ceramic, and you know, just like, just like with any company, when you pull in a company and to pick up their films, like you don't really have a lot of selection, and the super ceramics are definitely one of those things that most people aren't going to be able to, um, aren't either going to have the budget to compare, or are, are just going to take the company at their word because it's their most expensive stuff. So I always wanted to see, um, you know, this super ceramic versus this one. How similar are they? I assume they're going to be very similar on the heat rejection, um, but when it comes down to like the haze and the look and, and maybe a little shrinking, um, it'd be really, really helpful to see. How much was this? Uh, this one is with the sunroof, 850. So two sunroof panels on this one. Alrighty, my dudes, I'm going to sign off here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I will see you soon. I think Tuesday. Wait. No. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to speak too soon. Next week's schedule is already a little funky. So there will be another live stream here soon. I was hoping to have... I actually don't have anybody booked for Monday. But I have people booked for like later in the week. Monday was just kind of a weird day. Like Nobody was booking for Monday. So we'll see. All righty. Bye. Bye. Oh, and thank you, Clearview, for the...